welcoming next Nick Demas. I got that right. You got it exactly right. Well done. And you tell me how to pronounce it, but that's you know. Well, you can think of it like Nicodemus from the Bible. Absolutely. Okay. Well, it's great to see you. Excited to have your film in Dead Center. It's called Body Electric. And if I were to sum it up, it is the journey from dysmorphia to acceptance. And I got to tell you, there this might be a topic that's in the public mind right now, Nick. Well, you know, I think what happened was I turned 45. And I was looking around and I'm part of the LGBTQ plus community. And in this community, I was looking around at how we valued each other. And particularly with gay men, it is very physical. And I realized what was my usefulness going to be in a culture that's youth obsessed. And I realized that I didn't have any role models to look up to of how to age because those that came before us, the generation before us, many of many died of AIDS. And before that, basically that generation was in the closet. So here I am the first sort of generation of out gay people who are aging and we have no one to look up to and we don't know how to do it. I'm not sure that we understand or appreciate that. I, I don't think we appreciate older people in this country. You, you even see it in the headlines. Okay, oh. dismissive of that. Oh, completely dism dismissed. And I, uh, there is ageism, right? That is a there. That is an a, absolutely a thing. And I realized, you know, as I was, so, as I'm saying, I'm turning 45. That doesn't sound very old, but in the community that I'm that I was in, I'm in, I'm part of. That is old. And that was really sort of the impetus for the beginning of the film and looking at how I viewed my body, how we as cultures view body uh, and what happens to you as it shifts and as it changes. You see this in terms of, I always kind of watch television commercials. They'll be representative of what is happening in culture, right? I mean, yeah. you start looking at how couples are portrayed in different commercials that you would never have believed five years ago, right? Yeah. You see these commercials and you go, well, that's reality, but people don't want reality oftentimes. But sociologically, you're correct. I mean, this is pioneering for older gay men. And you're saying that that community is really body obsessed and stay in shape, right? Yeah, and it is a athletic. body. It is a body obsessed culture. And the other thing, the other thing that as I was beginning to do some research, I found that a statistic that 42% of all eating disorders in men are gay men. So while population wise, three, six percent, depending, you can go as high as 10, depending on who you're, you're, you, you're talking to that identify as gay and yet have 42% of all eating disorders in men. So it is very prevalent, this sort of body obsession in the gay male community. And so I wanted to sort of dive in and figure out, well, why? Why do we, why, why are we so obsessed with our body? And I began to interview people throughout the community and, and dig into that a bit. And then as I was doing that, I realized, well, this is beyond just a gay thing. This is an entire LGBTQ, the entire rainbow, so to speak. It's a problem across the board. Because then I found out that 54% of all LGBTQ identifying queer people at some point are di diagnosed with an eating disorder. 54%. So this is a problem within the community beyond just gay men. Gay men are like very highlighted in it. It's very, pro, you know, very um, prevalent, but this is actually a wider community issue. And after I found that fact, that's when I really was like, okay, I've got to open this documentary a bit because at first it was very gay male focused. Uh, and age focused, but I widened it a bit to get into the community 
at large and ended up asking a lot of questions that I'm not sure we ever fully, <laughs> you know, can answer. I, I think that in many ways the film starts conversation more than, in, than it does say, ask a question and answers it. it. Doesn't ask a dramatic question and say, this is the answer. It opens, it opens more questions in many ways. Okay, so we've, just from my standpoint, it's only in the last 10 years, maybe the last five years, that people started listening carefully on issues about behavioral health in this country mm -hmm. really recently. So what do behavioral health and organized medicine, the House of Medicine, all these sorts of folks, what in your research are you finding out as the answer to what you've just proffered, which is this seems to be a, a, a eating disorders for gay men, it's, it's an enormous problem. And there are so many health out, bad health outcomes from this. So the answer or the question is why? Yeah, that that's really the big, big question. Why? So I dug into, you know, where does it tracing the history went back to, you know, what is it? Is it the oppression that, that gay, gay men felt from uh, the culture at large? Is it, why, why with each other do we then sort of almost take on the bullying that we experienced as youth and we then turn to each other? And then I realized that there was a, a correlation to the AIDS crisis itself. And pre-AIDS crisis, many gay people will tell you that the culture wasn't as body obsessed. And there was a turning point during the AIDS crisis where people wanted to look healthy. And in doing so, began to work out more, began to eat obsessively, began to, and it began to shift the culture of gay men as a collective, and then the queer people as a collective. And this next generation has in many ways taken on the PTSD of that time. And this is in a many ways how it is now manifested to obsession, to excess, to extremism. And being a part of that, I too went through an entire journey of accepting myself. And really that's what it boils down to is how do you accept yourself in a culture that is, is, is not accepting of you exactly as you are and as a wider culture as well that doesn't necessarily honor you, honor your body, honor who you are. And really that's what the film in terms of the acceptance part is about, about turning inward, about being okay with exactly who you are. And that really, you know, what medical experts would say is it's the inner work. It's not actually the outer work. It's not actually the body itself. It's what's deeper within. And so we have therapists, obviously, in the film that we, that, and uh, medical doctor, you know, that really sort of we dive into that a bit as well. Did you get any pushback from anybody inside the LGBTQ plus community or outside of the community in getting into, uh, obviously for medicine, it's, it's gonna be controversial. Uh, you just brought up that could be the PTSD from, from the bullying, all sorts of things to get in there into this. It could be behavioral, it could be medical, it could be DNA, who knows, right? Yeah. Lessons from uh, moving forward to in researching this sort of topic. Yeah, so it is multi-pronged. There is no one reason. And that's why it's such a complex issue because for somebody, it may be trauma or somebody, it may be the bullying that they experience, which is a form of trauma. Ultimately for some, it may be, uh, how they were raised. There are many, many factors that can contribute to how you view your body and how cultural, how we, as a culture view bodies and which bodies are prioritized. You know, even within the LGBTQ plus community, there is what we found a hierarchy. The white gay male 
is way up top on sort of the re respect of the body. So there's so many factors that like pulling it apart was really complex in the making of the film. You know, what story did were we going to focus on? And at the end of the day, it was a personal doc and it was my 45th birthday. And so we focused the film basically on my journey. And then we pronged out from there to look at these various uh, levels of it. Uh, because it is complex, like you're saying. I'm fascinated by the topic as a person who watches closely public health, these sorts of issues. I read about it constantly. And this is really a pioneer in this and bringing an issue to the forefront. How many people are talking about? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. We just finished the film and the trailer last this week, <laughs> right before dead center, just in time for our premiere. And we put the trailer out, uh, on social media and you know we just started this right we had 208 followers and it 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 went a bit viral and i think part of that is because nobody's talking about this and that is why i really wanted to do the film is because as i was saying at 45 i was turning this age that nobody wants to talk about and you're no longer the valid one or the important one and i began to to realize that this is a conversation that we have privately but we don't actually talk about for real out yeah. publicly. So oh, one of the things I one of the things I like about Dead Center is it's opposite of what we're seeing right now. People curating their own reality and hiding in their cocoon to just absorb the information that they want to to uh, buttress up their own biases. And we're seeing this all over this uh, world right now because of social media and things of this nature and algorithms. And I just think it's, it's a fascinating topic and you're shedding some light on something that will cause a lot of people to think about outside of your community, inside of your community. And I'm looking forward to it very much. I should yeah. point out by the way that Nick has, uh, knows something about our Oklahoma city community, having been at Lyric many years ago, and of course we enjoy so much over there and now a filmmaker. What's next for you, Nick? It's funny that you asked that. I, uh, you know, after Lyric, I was at Lyric for about nine years and I went to Broadway and was a Broadway producer for a couple of years, filmmaker. And now I'm finding that I think my next project is going to be bringing all of these pieces together. And uh, I'm, I'm gonna do a musical, a film, a musical film. That's my next project, taking Broadway, taking my time at Lyric, taking filmmaking, bringing it all together. And who knows, maybe I'll shoot it in Oklahoma because I love shooting in Oklahoma. We shot part of the documentary in Oklahoma. Um, it's a great place to, um, to create art. Uh, that I know from my years at Lyric, there is a really supportive community for art in Oklahoma City and in Tulsa that I don't think necessarily the rest of uh, the country knows or fully gets until they come from other places to dead center. And they, they always, it's always so fun to, to see their shock and awe of how great dead center is. And because they don't, it's just not something that you think that, Oh, there's this big cultural center in the middle of the country. Um, I think there is this sort of bias against it in many ways. And then tell, tell the artists come to Oklahoma and they, they're, they're, and they're blown away by the support. And I know I was when I came to Oklahoma, which is you know now over 20 some years ago. So. Looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it personally. And it's thought provoking. Congratulations. Uh, and just got it done. I mean, just this is the time. world premiere, right? This is the world premiere. So just in time, really, it's a full circle moment for me coming back to Oklahoma with the world premiere of this film. It really is. It's truly remarkable. And the date and time, can you share with us? If you know, you time Saturday time? night at 8 p.m. at uh, the Museum of Art and Sunday at four at Harkins. Oh, the Museum of Art has got some in Oklahoma City. People who haven't been there lately, you need to go. OK, it is world class. And um, so is. Nick Demas. I got it. That you got it. Again. You got it. <laughs> Body you. Electric. Body Electric. Movie. And uh, we're looking forward to it and looking forward to seeing you back in Oklahoma City. 
Thank you.